Austin Tech Connect is the official podcast of the Austin Technology Council. Founded in 1992, ATC exists to help unite the local technology ecosystem and to encourage the spread of community, collaboration, and conversations in Central Texas. This podcast is sponsored by SailPoint. They are a leading provider of identity security for the modern enterprise, empowering organizations worldwide to put identity security at the core of their business. With a foundation of artificial intelligence and machine learning, SailPoint Identity Security delivers the right access to the right identities and resources at the right time. Now, here is this week's episode. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Austin Tech Connect, the official podcast of the Austin Technology Council. My name is Tom Singer, and I have been with ATC for now over two years, and we are looking towards the future of our Austin Tech ecosystem. And we're a community group first and a membership group second. So whether you're a member or not, we need your voice here with ATC so that we can look to the future, we can come up with programming, and we can serve this community as best we can. Every single week on this podcast, I try to bring people who will have interesting conversations about where Austin's come from, where we are today, and where we're going on the future. And today is one of the few times, maybe only the second time, we have a repeat guest here on Austin Tech Connect. And we are joined today by Joyce Durst, the founder and CEO of Growth Acceleration Partners. Hey, Joyce, welcome to the show. Thanks, Tom. I uh, loved our first chat, so I'm really thrilled we get to do it again. Well, I'm glad to have you back. And one of the reasons, amongst many, that I asked you to come back on the show is you were the 2024 inductee into the Austin Tech Hall of Fame. So first of all, congratulations, Joyce. Thank you, Tom. Wow, what a, I just cannot tell you what an honor, but what a big surprise that was. And literally every single day since then, I wake up going, I need to do more to earn this. Like that is a really prestigious thing. We still got a lot of work to do. Well, you certainly were a worthy recipient of that award. And for those of you who aren't familiar, and most of you probably are, if you listen to this show, this year, the Austin Technology Council uh, undertook something that we probably should have started and launched 20 years ago. And that is the Austin Tech Hall of Fame. And we set it up to be like a six or seven year launch because there are so many people who helped build this community. So we had eight foundational slash legacy inductees. We had the 2024 inductee, which was Joyce. And we also celebrated a first time founder award for someone who's just getting their wheels going, but who has a really good runway ahead of them. And the event was great. We had over two, about 200 people and uh, it was a lot of fun, right? Oh, it was great fun. Wow. I think if we'd had a larger venue, Uh, And I think next year we will. It will probably be twice as big. But there was so much excitement about supporting those foundational kind of award winners. That was a really great evening and so great to get the founders of this community kind of back together in one room. Yeah, it was. And we we sold that out in eight days. I thought for a first time event, you know, keep it small, keep it simple. Uh, we're still going to next year, keep it a little small, keep it simple. But the idea is over the years, we can grow this into something that the whole community can get their, their hands behind it and really celebrate. So this is one of the reasons we wanted Joyce to come back on the show, but she is also very, very dedicated to the Austin tech community, serving companies, serving founders, uh, serving those who come from different demographics uh, who want to have their place in tech. And so I want to talk a little bit about that. But for those of you who don't know her, she is a founder, a CEO, an entrepreneur, and she really likes not only growing her own business, we all like that, but she also likes seeing other people succeed. She's been on the chamber board for a long time. She has supported groups like ATC and other organizations around town over her 30 plus years here in Austin. She moved here 30 years ago with BMC Software, uh, went on to, to run another company and now has had Gap for quite some time. So Joyce, let's jump into the interview. Tell us a little bit about your impressions of Austin when you got here and what you've seen change. You know, I think on the, when I was, uh, working and living in Houston, uh, which has really nice tall trees and lots of great restaurants. Um, But when my boss came into me one day and said, hey, we have this opportunity, would you consider, you know, moving to Austin? Literally, my response was, hold on, I have to go home and pack. Like, (laughs) I just, I I could not have been more excited about getting to move to Austin. And, And the reality was much like I had envisioned, uh, just super, a vivacious city, vibrant, uh, lots of 
kind of academia, lots of technology, lots of startups. And I just could not wait to be a part of that community. The thing I didn't know that I was surprised by and that really I built the rest of my career on is it's a city built around relationships and community. And literally when I came here and got started, any person that I would ask, hey, could I spend 15 minutes with you? I'm trying to learn this or that. Everyone said yes. And that is one of the things I think that makes Austin so unique and so special. Yeah, no, I agree. I moved here just just a, a smidgen before you. I moved here in, in 90, 1991, and mm-hmm. I literally thought I was staying three years. I wasn't in the tech industry, and I came here. My, my then-girlfriend, now wife, was also offered a job here, totally separate companies, separate industries, and we thought, wow, that, that's bigger than both of us. Let's go have an adventure. Uh, we'd only been dating six months. She actually said, are, are you asking me to marry you? And I said, no, I'm asking you to go to Austin for three years. Uh, and and we, we got engaged here. We got married here. We, we raised two children here. And I don't think we ever could have expected not only what a welcoming community it was, but as the tech community started to boom, which really kind of it started before, but really you can track 91 forward where it really starts to percolate up. So all I ever know in my whole career here was sort of right. a tech community a tech boom town, but people were so welcoming. And what was interesting, and we talked about this before uh, we started recording, I was about, I don't know, 38 years old. I was here about 10 or 10 or 12 years. And separately, Pike Powers and Carol Thompson both pulled me aside and said, you know, you're starting to develop a good reputation. People know who you are. How are you serving this community as we continue to grow. And I, I was like, I don't understand. What do you mean? I, I was a sales guy and a marketing person. I'm like, I'm, I'm doing my job. And they said, no, what, once, once you start to get recognized, you need to find your ways to give back to Austin. What boards mm-hmm. are you serving on? What committees are you on? And, 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 and who are you mentoring? And for some reason, I believed it and fell directly into that whole world of making sure that that there was that give back mentality that, that Austin had back in the 90s, 2000s. And we still have, but I think we need to pay attention to that. So what do you think the changes have been that you've seen from 94 till now? Well, certainly explosive growth. Um, and I, I feel great that the culture, I think, in terms of it being a, a community that's focused on communities remain the same. I've got similar advice that you received about serving on boards early. So I've always, my entire career, served on nonprofit boards. Uh, some of them, uh, like Special Olympics, I served on that board for eight years. I was on the advisory board for Seton Northwest Hospital. I've been, as I said, been in the chamber a long time. But I think it's everyone, it's really incumbent upon everyone to find something that you're really passionate about and that you can give back. And that's, you know, by serving on boards or by volunteering or giving money or all of the above. And people need to create companies for your encouraging your leadership team and your organization to do the same. And that's, um, I've seen that continue at the highest levels, I would say, in terms of what's changed. I think we need more of a push uh, to communicate, because I think they're all more than willing, but to communicate throughout the organization. So we're getting all of the 20s and 30s and 40s age people kind of actively involved in these nonprofits and in organizations of all types. That's the part I don't, uh, you know, because we've grown so big, we're maybe not doing that part quite as well as we did when we were, you know, a small city. Well, it was true when we were a small city. It was easy for everybody to know everybody, right? There was, yeah. you know, the, the business community, especially the subset of, of the tech community was not that large. And now, of course, it's the largest sector, you know, that we have. And we've incorporated over the last 10 plus years, about a million more people who came here for tech jobs. So I, I do think it's more difficult, but you're right. You said something that is so true. I think the younger generations, they, they want to be leaders. They want to serve. Yeah. They, they want to find their seat at the table, but I don't know that we're doing a great job of really showing them. I, I heard a speaker the other day who counsels up and coming technology hubs about how they grow. And as I listened to him talk, it was exactly, he didn't cite Austin as the example, but he was talking about this idea of giving first and showing up and realizing that it takes multiple years for the right players to, to get connected. But at the same time that you don't have to have a title, you don't have to have had multiple exits, uh, you know, you don't have to be any specific, you know, age or gender or race that everyone can find their seat at the table. And that's what with diversity and with youth and with diversity of thought, how we grow a tech community. And I was thinking, God, that's exactly right. 
how do we put that spark back into Austin? So how do you think we get that spark of, hey, there's room for everybody to volunteer. There's boards and committees for everybody. It, it doesn't have to be ATC. It doesn't have to be the chamber, but it's right. said that Austin has more you know, business-oriented nonprofits per capita than just about any city out there. So, so there's lots of opportunities. How do we put that spark into people? Yeah, you know, one, I think it just, it's a really, it's awareness because in the generations um, that, you know, have graduated uh, all the way, you know, if you look at the generations kind of Gen Z, Gen Alpha, even millennials, they really want to change the world. We should be so excited about putting the future in their hands because they care about making this world a better place. So I'm excited about that. But there's a lot of the things where it's like we just, you know, those of us that are on these things, we got to open the door wider. And we do that. I think direct actions we can take is I've had the opportunity um, at least once or twice each year to go speak to entrepreneurship classes in the graduate school at UT or in the undergrad kind of programs. I get to go speak to boot camps and the Founders Institutes. In every one of those, I try to spread that message. And I think all of the kind of leaders in place right now have opportunities to go do that, you know, mentor someone, be an advocate for someone, speak to groups of, you know, emerging companies, but make sure this participating, participating in the community and giving back is part of your message, not just about here's how you do fundraising. Here's how you put your pitch deck together. Okay. We got to teach them that too. But this other part is so that we really have these companies that are values led put people and culture and community first as important as growing revenues. That's the kind of company we want here in Austin. Absolutely. And, and I have this philosophy that, you know, if you help others win, we all win. And, and sometimes, you know, in our current world, and I'm not pointing a finger at Austin, I'm saying society wide, we do run into people who kind of lead with what's in it for me. And yeah. I see that once in a while in the community. I, I have the opportunity in this role to meet with a lot of company founders and a lot of these people that they're young, they're hungry, they're working, they have 20, 50, 100 employees. But at the same time, when you look at their age bracket, they also are maybe newly married or they have young children at home. So they're being pulled in a lot of, of different directions. And sometimes they'll be like, well, well, why do I care about serving the community? I'll, I'll do that once I've made it. And mm -hmm. I always say that, look, you, you got to learn to flex those muscles of service early and you can't just walk into a board seat at the chamber. You've got to sort of, you know, grow your reputation and, and things like that. So I, I, I do agree that I think that we, we have the foundation for this in Austin more so than most cities. And I think that we need to, to keep that going and keep that spark going. So, so what do you see with the people on your teams and, and the other organizations that you belong to? Are, are we doing a good job of, of luring the next generation? I think we can. I think we are trying. I think we can do better. And I think the key message to uh, getting the young people involved is um, we need their ideas. Right. They have uh, a they're the most in, the generations coming up are the most intelligent, well-educated generations that have ever set foot on the planet. That's fantastic. Yep. Um, we have to have their voices in the conversation. They have new perspectives, different way of thinking, uh, and and we just desperately need that if if we're going to succeed as a society and bring everyone along, people of all genders, races, colors, shapes, sizes, whatever. We got to get all that in there. We need their help to do that. And I think when they hear that, um, then that strikes a chord on like, oh, I don't really just want all my my decisions and futures being planned out by just one generation or just one group of people. Um, and most of them, when you tell them, hey, no, we really want to hear your voice, then they're very excited to say, OK, I'll, I'll come. I'll come participate. Yeah. And I mean, you know, the, the Austin Technology Council is a 32 year old organization. And I always mm -hmm. joke that we were founded to one, one of the reasons for our founding was to help put tech on the map as a possible yeah. economic driver of Austin. That's correct. And, you know, at that, at the time it was founded, I would have been about 26 years old. So I was in that young, the young generation, you know, back, back in that era, I wasn't in tech at the time, but I, I watched all this bubbling up around me while I was here in town, you know, and it's interesting because now to be, you know, 32 years later on the other side of this, I'm, I'm 58. I'm really excited 
about the next generation. I, I don't think that we should have ageism up or down. I think that, that they learn from people with a little bit of that seasoned gray in their in the, the temples of their hair. And I think we learn from those people who are fresh out of colleges with ideas. So, you know, ATC is, is an old organization and I'm looking to sort of reinvent it. And one of the things I keep saying is we can't do that unless we have the voices of this whole new generation, both people who've moved here, people who were born here, but again, people who come from all the possible different demographics that maybe haven't had that seat at the table before. So I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. What can ATC do to help be a spark for that? Oh, that, that is, a, I think there's such a good opportunity there. Cause I do think Tom, I so appreciate your leadership. You're so open to being agile and, you know, listening to the community about, Hey, what do we really need? Um, you know, so maybe having, you know, some particular programming focused on the issues that that the next generation coming into the workforce is most concerned about. You know, that may be about workplace flexibility. It may be about workplace culture. Here's a disturbing stat I'll share with you. Um, there's a lot of women um, just taking women as one demographic. There's a lot of women that that start their careers in tech. Uh, by the time they are 35, 50% of them, five zero, have left tech. Wow. 50%. That is a, I mean, that is a very bothersome number because that, you know, can, those are future leaders. Those are future people that start companies. And they, when surveyed, many of them just don't believe that large tech companies, no one in particular, but in general, the industry does not share their values, um, doesn't have a culture where they feel like they can be their authentic self or raise families or take care of parents or whatever they have to do. So I think ATC, one thing that we can do, and not just for women, but for uh, people of color have many of the same issues. You know, we ought to have listening sessions to them and share that with the leaders of the, you know, people really running companies in Austin right now. And hey, here's what we're hearing from this constituent. They want to participate. This is a great place, great industry to have a lifetime career, as I can attest to. Um, but we can invite more people in and be even stronger. And if Austin's going to succeed, we have got to have a stronger startup ecosystem. Well, I, I agree. And as the father of two 20-something daughters, when I hear stats like that, it, it does make me cringe because I like to believe that the world they live in is, you know, is is less of a glass ceiling, is is more opportunity. But those those types of stats make make me cringe a little bit. So, you know, you talk about the fact that, you know, if Austin's going to lead and if Austin's going to do this, you know, it's interesting because for, I don't know, 30 years, Austin was sort of, we positioned ourselves and it wasn't by accident. We had, as the Hall of Fame is showing with the the, the original eight people who were inducted, eight more next year, eight more the year after, sort of those foundational foundational leaders that we had. It, it, Austin wasn't, the tech ecosystem wasn't created by accident. There was yeah. visions that was out there for what we could do. But for 30 years, we were sort of the alternative to the Valley, to Los Angeles, to Boston, to New York. And we were the scrappy alternative. You know, we were this other place. And now when I travel and I have the uh, good fortune, I know the leaders of tech councils in you know many, many other cities. There's an organization called Techna, which is the Technology Councils of North America. And a couple of weeks back, we had our annual summer conference and 34 tech council leaders and their staffs were there. And it's interesting when I talk to people in other places, they we still see ourselves as this scrappy alternative you know, tech hub. <laughs> but when you ask these other cities about tech in America – they talk about the big boys, the, the leaders, the, the cities that have it, that are established, that are, and in some cases they even use, you know, sort of yesterday's way. Mm -hmm. They talk about the Valley, Boston, Los Angeles, New York, and Austin. Right. And in sharing this with another leader in the community, he goes, what do we care what other people think? And I said, well, we don't really care what people think, but we should know because if we're going to position ourselves to continue to move forward and grow, we have to know how we're being viewed and- now everybody's a tech hub. You know, every city that I talk to, small cities, they have these burgeoning little tech things. So if everybody's a tech hub, what does the future mean to being a tech hub? And I, I think we need to focus on being more of an innovation center. We need to think of things that what, you know, the, the tagline, the motto of the University of Texas is what starts here, changes the world. 
I think we need to right. bring that into the zeitgeist, the culture of the Austin tech tech scene. So, so what are your thoughts on all that? That was a long, a long Tom monologue there. That was, uh, no, it was good. It was great. Now I'll just build on uh, one of the ways I think we have to grow this ecosystem is kind of go back to where we've, where we started this city from a tech perspective, which was the collaboration. So, you know, Innovation Center, yes. Um, University of Texas, and I went to A&M, so I'll mention that one, yeah. Texas A&M. Um, but all of the great, powerful universities we have in and around this area, we have to make it easier to commercialize technology. It cannot be this painful process that it is today. If you look at how Silicon Valley continues to really launch so many companies. A lot of them come right out of university. There's, I mean, there are just brilliant minds in these universities. We got to make that part easier. Um, and, you know, the consortium of private company, public, you know, keeping legislation really fully behind us on being able to start companies, make it easy and from regulations and stuff to do that. So put government and university and um, private sector uh, and the just the pioneer kind of spirit that we already have here in Austin. If you put all those together, we are unstoppable. Um, so I think there's a lot still we can, we can do to far surpass what some of those other guys do. And when we do that, all the venture capitalists and PE guys will automatically come here. But first, we got to make it easier to get companies launched. Well, and it's interesting because when, when we were founded, we were founded, the Austin Technology Council was founded out of the University of Texas, out of IC mm -hmm. squared with the blessing of the right. chamber. And when I look at these tech councils that are thriving, right, I'm, I'm still a one man show, although I'll probably be adding someone to the staff this year. But, you know, some of the cities, you know, they have eight, 10, 12, 18 people, you know, on their staffs and they're funded by their local universities, uh, their their local large employers, the multinational tech companies, the the the, the big alphabet soup of the, the names we throw out there, the six largest tech companies, and in Austin, I, I don't have that. The university is not involved. In, in Northern Virginia, she has six universities who are on their board, or maybe nine. Wow. Uh, of course, she has a board of forty, which might be a little a, a little large for for that. But <laughs> but but the universities are there, the big companies are there, the small companies are there, and so I'm I'm trying to figure out how do we start bringing all of these groups together, and you know maybe it's with ATC, maybe it's through somebody else. I believe that if if all the nonprofits work together, we all win instead of having this idea yes. of of competition between the chamber or Austin Women in Technology or us. I I think when we promote each other's stuff, and and you see this. Uh, the relationship that, that we've had the last year and a half with the Chamber of Commerce and with Austin Women in Technology and with some others, if they have an event, it's in my newsletter. If I have an event, it's in there. It's in their Absolutely. newsletter. And that's not something we've always done. So we, we want to champion that. But how do you think we can lure all these different, the, the government, again, city government supports the tech councils in these growing places. How do we get the right. city? How do we get the state? How do we get the universities? And how do we get the big companies to, to come to the tables you know, to, to be part of that discussion. Any, any ideas? Well, I think we're, we're close. We just haven't quite gotten over the finish line yet, but um, you know, the, the mayor, Mayor Watson did an amazing job in putting together this task force to, to produce a report on how do we increase entre uh, entrepreneurship companies led by women in Austin really powerful report. It's on their website. So anyone can go access it and read it. But the problem we've got is the city budget, which is really controlled by city council and the city manager. They don't they don't seem to have any funding to really support uh, entrepreneurship for women. And that's it, that's the missing link. So I think we're close. I think the mayor's fully behind it. I think, again, a lot of people want it. We just we have to connect some dollars to it. <clears throat> and maybe we have to do what you said that's been done in other cities. We have to go to these large companies and explain that this is in their best interest and it's civic duty and it's just part of what we all need to do is to help really kind of fund ATC and other entrepreneurship programs. Um, and one other thing I'll just add on, on your idea of collaboration, in my role as the vice chair for technology and innovation for the chamber, this idea is is at the center of every discussion we have. The chamber wants to be a convener, a connector, not an owner. So it's like, hey, let's make the community aware of all the great things 
that the ATC is doing. And let's make sure all of the chamber members know that. And if there's things by Women in Technology or Women Presidents Organization or uh, Div Inc., whatever it is, let's make sure we are spreading that message because that's I, we firmly believe that's the way we'll win is by connecting these resources together, not by separating them. Right. And when I read about the success of growing communities, not just tech communities, they're organically grown and nobody becomes, there, there's no real leader, right? You have to have sort yeah. of the nodes of the different things so that for different things that come up, one organization or, or one group of people can rise up and take that. Somebody else can take something else. You know, it can't be, um, it can't be a fiefdom by, by any means. And of course we're too big now to have that happen anyway, but if we can champion the way the chamber is trying, I am trying, all these other groups are trying. I, I think our future looks really bright when it comes to getting, you know, everybody to, the, to these tables. Cause there's not a table. That's the other thing I remind people is when people say, ah, we need a seat at the table. I'm like, well, there's 25 tables you know, yeah, which one? Yeah, let's let's <laughs> let's ahead. make sure everybody has a seat, right? I, I don't think we should be fighting. There's an old saying by a, a famous professional speaker, long passed away. His name was uh, Cavett Robert, and he said that within industries, we shouldn't be fighting over the slices of the pie. We should be working together to bake a bigger pie so everyone can have all the slices that they want. And and I think that's true about about our tech scene. Yeah, I absolutely, I absolutely agree. And there's so many great groups. In Austin, you know, with Entrepreneurs Organization and YPO, and there's just a ton. And and if we can bring the power of that together, um, we'll get we'll get the the Austin that we all want. Awesome. So let's let's look to the future a little bit. Okay. What, what do you think? If you took out your crystal ball, Joyce, what do you think is in the future, the next five years and ten years, for the Austin tech scene? Um, I'm optimistic that we're going to see a, a kind of resurgence in the market for tech. Um, the last kind of two years have been this era, uh, um, which I kind of blame Mark Zuckerberg for using this term, but cost optimization, which has really been the catchphrase used by most large companies as to why they were laying off so many people in tech. Um, I think the good news is there's an unlimited demand for technology in companies of all kinds. Every company is essentially a, a technology company. So I think the next few years, once we get out of 2024, I think the next few years will be a net, the next kind of beginning of a boom cycle for tech with lots of jobs and opportunities. AI certainly fits in that picture. Um, so I'm very optimistic. And I think this is the time that we've got to do all we can to support companies that are being founded because there's going to be a nice little upswing here in the next, you know, over the next year or two. Well, and again, I learned this from somebody who I, I met through the uh, Technology Councils of North America who counsels these up and coming tech hubs on stuff. And one of the things that, that he says, you know, that is so clear is that the job of everyone in a tech hub is to support the growth of tech companies. It's, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, we, we love the lawyers, we love the bankers, we love the venture capitalists, we love the, the consultants, we love the organizations like ATC and the chamber, et cetera. But- the focus has to be growing those startups and those mid-sized growth companies so that we can find our, our next unicorns, our next ones that are going right. to hire tens of thousands of people and, and be able to grow. So I try to remind everybody that, you know, what are we doing, no matter where you are in the community, to support the growth of tech companies? And I think that when we can, when we can do that and when we can remember that that's who that's why we're here that's that's what we're doing with ATC and with these other groups if we can focus on how do we help you grow then everybody wins uh, absolutely and and those that are in the tech community today we can all play a role in that you know find a startup company you know be a mentor be a connector maybe they need to you know hire their uh next um, product person or a marketing person um, and you know someone be that be that kind of resource for them maybe they need to meet their first vc we can all play a role in again doing what people did for tom for you and me which is <clears throat> introduce us to other people in the network let's let's continue all of us to strengthen this community by helping these up-and-coming companies small and mid-sized companies get larger so I, I think Joyce will agree, agree with me that, that she and I are making a call to everybody who's listening. What committees are you serving on? 
What yes. boards are you serving on? What organizations are you financially supporting? And who are you mentoring? Ask yourself, who have I helped this week to be able to advance their career in this community? And, and if you don't have an answer, it's early in the week. Start now. Find somebody that you can help in some way, right? Yeah, absolutely. And if you're looking for uh, technology-related uh, committees or boards or whatever, call Tom, send me a Slack. Um, we know a lot of different ones out there. We're happy to connect you. But we, you know, I, I encourage everyone to get involved in some way in in helping a person or a company. Nice. Well, Joyce, thank you for being one of the first repeat guests that we've ever had on Austin Tech Connect. Any final words for the, the, the greater community? Um, just this, y'all. So we have such a powerful tool here in Austin, in Austin Technology Council. They need your support. This community needs all of us to be engaged. Please get out there and do that. And let's make Austin again the city of our dreams. <laughs> well, again, Joyce Durst, 2024 inductee into the Austin Tech Hall of Fame. Thank you for being a guest here on Austin Tech Connect. And thank you to everybody who tuned in and listened. You know, I, I say it most weeks, if it wasn't for the audience, why would we have the show? But uh, people are continuing to share it out. Make sure that you send this to somebody you know who could benefit from this message. And then come back every week because we'll keep having really cool, smart entrepreneurs who are leading the community, people just as smart as Joyce Durst, and I know you're thinking, how will you ever find anybody as great as Joyce? But but next week, we, we, we sure will. That's right. Every week we do. Uh, and then make sure that you found a way to support some organizations here in this town. And, and I would like you to support the Austin Technology Council. You can find more at austintechnologycouncil.org. Thanks for listening to the Austin Tech Connect podcast. Make sure your company is a member of the Austin Technology Council and add your voice to the future of our tech ecosystem in Central Texas. 